Hello, yes, it is me, Mr. Late to the Party, and we got a decent chunk of Sunbreak info like a month ago, and I gotta admit, it's got me pretty excited. I made a prediction video before the trailer dropped, and it's safe to say that it went... Uh, just about how you would expect. But now that we have a bunch of details to work with, I thought now is as good a time as any to go over my thoughts about how Sunbreak is shaping up, including my opinions on the new monsters, areas, and characters, and what I think we can expect when June 30th finally rolls around. There's not a whole lot of intro to this one, so let's just dive straight in. But quickly, before we do, if you enjoy the video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps with the whole algorithm thing and getting this content in front of more people. All right, shameless plug aside, let's ride. So it's no secret that Rise's entire theme, both from an environment and monster design perspective, was inspired by Japanese culture and folklore. Just about every new monster has some form of corresponding yokai that its design is derived from, and Kimura Village and the Shrine Ruins are just dripping with Japanese cultural significance. I won't go too into that as I've done so in a previous video, which I'll pop in the little card thingy. To diverge from that theming a little bit and to make it a more unique experience, it would appear that Sunbreak is opting for a more westernized thematic, specifically drawing from European gods inspirations. This is reflected in the new monster designs as well as the new map we had revealed in the trailer. So let's talk about the new monsters first. First up is Malzino, the flagship monster of the whole expansion and our main big bad elder dragon of the whole story. Well, sort of, it seems. Malzina has a design that is clearly based on vampires, or probably more specifically, Count Dracula. It is red, white, and black, has some sort of life force draining power going on with those butterflies encircling it, which are reminiscent of bats. It cloaks itself in its wings, and it even has tiny little fangs protruding from its mouth. So far from what we've seen, I really like Malzino, and I'm interested to see how the hunt itself turns out. I can see it being this fast-moving trickster sort of monster that fakes the hunter out with a range of mobile short and long range attacks. The official website mentions it taking on a more sinister appearance once it's drained enough energy, which I'm not sure if that's referring to the glowing red form we've seen already, or if it's alluding to something new entirely. I guess we'll have to wait and see. I also imagine it'll operate just like every other flagship monster ever has, and will not actually be the final boss, but instead the entry point into the highest level of master rank, following which we will be introduced to an entirely new monster that won't appear in any of the promotional material or marketing. It appears that Malzino is also the primary monster of a trio being dubbed the Three Lords of Elgato, with the other two being Lunagaron and Garangom, which we will talk about in just a moment. Given this factor, I'm wondering if all three of these monsters will be considered the flagships of Sunbreak and not just Malzino, similar to the Faded Four and the Unrivaled Two from the fourth generation. Onwards now to Lunagaron, the ice element fanged wyvern that on the surface appears to be the love child of Tobigadachi and Odagaron, but that is far from the case. Honestly, at first, I was not aboard the Lunagaran hype train. It gave me really generic vibes in its first teaser trailer, and whilst I'm always down for a cool ice monster design, I just was not feeling it. That all changed, though, when we got the most recent trailer and Lunagaran's werewolf inspirations were on full display. Having monsters stand upright and being bipedal and vaguely humanoid is something that Capcom has previously shied away from, but have leaned into a bit more recently, the most obvious example being my personal favourite monster from Rise, Ghost Harag. Lunagaran continues this trend and it just feels like it really fits the theming of the monster really well. I'm not stoked about yet another monster that grows itself ice armor because it feels like that's been done to death, but it's a refreshing design and a further example of 5th gen's efforts to really diversify the fanged wyvern class of monsters. Lunagaran is also said to occupy a wide range of habitats beyond the ice themed maps, so I anticipate that we will be seeing quite a bit of this guy. And last but not least, we have the third of the three lords. Monkey. Garangorn was a reveal I was not in any way expecting, but I am very excited to take it on in Sunbreak. Where Malzino is a vampire, Lunagaran is a werewolf, it would seem that Garangorn draws inspirations from many things like golems, but specifically Frankenstein's monster. It's got the head shape for it, and its body parts seem a little bit mismatched, in my opinion anyway. This theme just seals the deal on this new trio of creatures, wrapping it up in a nice little bow, and it works way better than it should. Garangom is also one of the few monsters we've seen throughout the mainline series that utilizes multiple elements, and I just think that's really neat. Having to navigate around multiple elements is a neat little addition to the planning process of Monster Hunter, and is sure to make for an interesting fight. I just hope it doesn't have the Gamoth effect of being too too big and too slow to really be a challenging fight. I love Gamoth a lot, don't get me wrong, but it's a bit of a pushover in Generations. 
So that's the three brand new large monsters we've seen as of the recording of this video, and I actually really like all of them. But that is not all. On top of those, we of course saw the debut of Sunbreak's first brand new subspecies, Blood Orange Bishiten. It's pretty standard practice at this point that the base game in a generation doesn't include any subspecies, even those from previous generations, with some exceptions here and there. The follow-up game or expansion will then usually include a bunch of pre-existing ones, as well as a handful of new subspecies for newer monsters. But enough explaining, Blood Orange Bishiten seems cool. It's a pretty typical subspecies for a mid-game monster and reminds me a lot of something like Coral Puke Puke or Nightshade Palumu. It's neat, it's more elemental with the fire pine cones rather than poisonous fruit, but it didn't really steal the show by any means. Then you of course have the little gremlin jaggies, which just got revealed to be called boggies? Which like, I get it, they live in swamps, but it being so close to baggy is just... Kinda of weird. Regardless though, they are just the best, aren't they? The vacant expression, the tongue hanging out of the mouth, the dumb ears. I don't know what element or ailment they'll be, but they're a win from me, that's for sure. Then we have the first new look at an old face, Shogun Senator, which wasn't in the event trailer, but had its own trailer beforehand. A bizarre but welcome pick for a returning monster. I don't know anyone who particularly loves the Carapacean class of monster, but I'm always for roster diversity, and who knows, this could open the door for some brand new ones to be revealed at a later date in Sunbreak. But for now, the Shogun Senator is cool. I don't really feel particularly strong about it either way, but I welcome and embrace our new crab overlords. So that's all the monsters. Yep, that's it. Nothing left. Time to move on. Oh, all right. Let's talk about what everyone was really excited about. The return of the Astalos. Astalos is a monster that debuted as one of the four flagships of Monster Hunter Generations, and is the third of which that has now appeared in a Gen 5 game. I believe in you, Gameth. You can do it. Your time will come. Just hang in there, please. Astalos is a really cool monster. It blends insect and draconic motifs excellently in a way that isn't just gross. It's unique, and I'm interested to see how they go about bringing it into Rise. The tail end of Gen 4, where Astalos was introduced, was already pretty mobile and vertical, so I think it will make the transition quite well and fit into the roster with little issue. Of all monsters they could bring back, I'm personally pretty happy with Astalos, and I think it's best that Sunbreak continues to pick different returning monsters to Iceborne. So now that truly is it for the monsters. Hey guys, post-recording Jinch here. I just realized while editing, I missed a monster, uh, the all-important Gown Goat. Gown Goat? Gown Go I'm going to go with Gown Goat. Uh, yeah, it's it's neat. It's a new herbivore. Uh, they're big, fluffy slag toths, I guess. And they're kind of cool. And yeah. All right, cool. Back to the video. Now, uh, let's take a look at the new locale, the Citadel. I know that there is a video that dropped from Capcom that is a tour of this new map, but a large part of the fun for me when booting up a new Monster Hunter game is experiencing the maps for the first time, so I haven't actually watched that yet, nor do I really intend to. From what little I've seen, the Citadel seems like it's somewhere between the Hawfrost Reach and the Guiding Lands, which were brought into World with Iceborne, and if it's half as deep as those maps were, I will be pretty happy with it. I do hope that they're differentiated enough so it doesn't just feel like the Frost Islands and the Shrine Ruins sort of squished together, but only time will tell. Now, a curious side note here. If you jump onto the official Monster Hunter site, the page with info for the Citadel is titled New Locales, as in plural, and it's repeated more than once, so I think it's a pretty safe bet that we're going to be getting more than just one map when the expansion drops, which would be pretty exciting. Personally, I hope for a remade version of some really old school map, like maybe even the OG Forest and Hills, or Verdant Hills if you want to call it that. As for the new characters, all of them, except for the actual child of course, are weirdly hot, and I'm here for it. My personal favourites are Hot Weaponsmith Lady, Hot Old Man, and Rondine's Hot Sister. And they seem like a colourful cast of characters that will help keep the story pretty engaging by Monster Hunter standards anyway. Alright, well, those are the biggest and flashiest new things, but what about the gameplay changes? Well, there's of course going to be a range of new Silkbind attacks, which don't really get me that hyped since I can never really tell if they're going to be fun or not until I give them a try. But what's got me really excited is the improved wall running. You may have noticed like I did that there was a much smoother transition when starting the wall run animation in the trailer, and the website says, and I quote, you no longer have to perform a wire dash in order to initiate a wall run. And honestly, thank God. It always felt so shitty 
transitioning to a wall run by using a wire dash in base rise, and it really took me out of it. And this is actually one of the things that has me the most hyped, believe it or not. Smoother movement will always be a good thing. So there's probably something I missed, but all in all, Sunbreak has me pretty optimistic, that's for sure. I wasn't the biggest fan of Monster Hunter Rise. I felt it to be a bit of a letdown for my own personal expectations for Monster Hunter. That's not to say I hate it, that's not to say it's bad. I truly don't think there's any bad Monster Hunter games. It just wasn't exactly what I wanted and wasn't something I could really sink my teeth into like I could with World and some of the older games. Sunbreak, however, seems to be shaping up nicely and it actually has me excited to jump back into Rise in the lead up to June 30th. I look forward to making more videos and joining you all in the hype as we get closer and closer to the release date, but for now, that will just about do it. I won't prattle on for any longer than I need to. Follow me over on Twitter if you're so inclined and I will catch you all in the next video. See you later, folks.